Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering hypoglycemia and nursing management for this disorder. So guys, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget, like this video, subscribe to this channel, press that red notification button so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can also catch me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, where I go over questions during the week. I explain the rationales on most of them. So if you want to get some studying in there, in during the week, you can also catch around those social media platforms. So guys, let's get started. Hypoglycemia, low blood glucose. Look at what it says. It occurs when there is too much insulin in proportion to available glucose in the blood. What does insulin do? It brings down the blood sugar. So it makes sense. If there's too much of that insulin, that will cause hypoglycemia. This causes the blood glucose to drop to less than 70. You know that the normal blood sugar range is what? 70 to 110. Signs and symptoms, shakiness, palpitations where the patient feels like their heart is coming out of their chest, nervousness, diaphoresis, they're sweating all over the place, anxiety, hunger, pallor, if they're Caucasian, instead of their skin being pink, it's what? Pale, white. Other manifestations, they may have difficulty speaking. And guys, that also um, has to do with the confusion they may start to have because when your brain is starving for that glucose, for that energy, you're going to have the difficulty speaking. You're going to have confusion, don't you think? Visual disturbances, stupor, confusion, coma. You see these um, signs and symptoms that I just um, mentioned to you? These are the worst. So you can start out with the shakiness and the palpitations and the diaphoresis and anxiety and the pallor and the hunger. And if that patient does not get the glucose that they need, that they need, it could turn into the difficulty speaking, the, the visual disturbances, the stupor, confusion, and even coma, all right? Untreated hypoglycemia can then progress to loss of consciousness, seizures, coma, even death. Causes of hypoglycemia are, are often related to a mismatch in the timing of food intake. And look at this guy's peak action of insulin. Let me stop there. You guys have to understand this. So if a patient takes their insulin, but they don't eat, that insulin is going to bring down that patient's blood sugar. And because they haven't eaten, they haven't had anything to bring that, that, bring that blood sugar back up even slightly. What kills people faster, hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia? Hypoglycemia. So this is what they mean when they say a mismatch in the timing. Patient taking that insulin, but they haven't had anything to eat. And here's the second part, peak action of insulin. Well, we know peak means up, right? The peak action of insulin is when that insulin is the highest. It's working the most. But what's the action of insulin? To drop the patient's blood sugar. So the peak action of insulin where insulin is working the best is when that patient's at risk for hypoglycemic reaction. Let's keep going. So it says peak of or oral hypoglycemic agents that increase endogenous insulin secretion. Let's talk about that. So we talked about how if the patient takes insulin, but they haven't eaten, that could cause hypoglycemia. Great. We talked about how um, if during the peak time of the insulin, when that insulin is working the best, which means it can make the patient's blood sugar drop the lowest, the patient hasn't had, has had anything to eat or hasn't had enough to eat, yes, that can cause a hypoglycemic reaction. But look at the third part where they talk about the oral hypoglycemics. Remember, um, in the last video I made about diabetes, I talked about these oral hypoglycemics and how many of them do what? They encourage, they force the pancreas to shoot out more insulin. So imagine the patient taking the oral hypoglycemic, something to bring down that blood sugar, but they haven't eaten. They don't have anything to help balance it out. That can cause a hypoglycemic reaction. The balance between blood glucose and insulin can be disrupted by administering too much insulin or medication. That makes sense because insulin and oral anti-diabetic agents both bring down your blood sugar. Ingesting too little food, that makes sense. If you don't ingest food, 
that food doesn't get broken down into glucose that the tissues can use, okay? Delayed timing of eating. If you don't eat soon enough, you take your insulin, you take your oral anti-diabetic agent, but you don't eat soon enough, that absolutely will bring down your blood sugar and performing unusual amounts of exercise. We talked about that in my last video. Exercise does what to the blood glucose? It decreases it. Hypoglycemia can occur at any time, but most episodes occur when the oral anti-diabetic agents or insulin is at its what? Peak of action or when the patient's daily routine is disrupted without adequate adjustments in diet, medication, and activity. That just said a mouthful, so let's talk about that. This is like the third or maybe even fourth time that I'm seeing the author tell us that the peak action time of insulin is when it's most dangerous for the patient to have a hypoglycemic reaction. What did I tell you about when the author keeps writing the same thing over and over and over again? That means it's important to know. You're going to see this on the test. You need to understand that the peak of insulin is when the patient's at risk for a hypoglycemic reaction the most. Again, also, when the patient's routine's disrupted by with inadequate adjustments in their diet. So let's say some, the patient had an abnormally busy day. On this day, they had to walk a mile and they're not used to walking a mile, right? So they walk that mile. What do you think is going to happen? Is it walking exercise? Their blood sugar dropped, but guess what? They didn't adjust their diet. So they walked a mile, but they didn't eat a little bit more food than normal. What do you think is going to happen? Hypoglycemic reaction. All right, let's talk about nursing management. At the first sign of hypoglycemia, you're going to check the blood glucose if possible. And that makes sense, guys. ADPI, assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, evaluation. The first thing you're going to do what? Assess. Get information. Take their blood sugar. At a sign and symptom of hypoglycemia. What are those signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia right here, guys? Your shakiness, your palpitation, your nervousness, diaphoresis, anxiety, hunger, pallor. You don't want to wait until the patient's having difficulty breathing, stupor, confusion. Pop you don't want to wait for those late signs. You want early signs. The minute you see an early sign and symptom, hot and, um, hot and, wait, cool and clammy, they need some candy, hot and dry, sugar too high. So cool and clammy, their, their skin is cool, they're sweating, they're confused, um, they may have some shakiness, they may have some agitation, any of those signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, you want to check their blood sugar, okay? So first thing you want to do is check their blood sugar. If it's less than 70, immediately begin treatment for hypoglycemia. Don't waste any time because hypoglycemia will kill a person much faster than hyperglycemia, okay? And in my last um, video, I did... Um, speak about that. I taught about, you know, the rules of 15, how you want to give the patient um, the 15 grams of sugar, wait 15 minutes, check them again, make sure you check my other video to go over that. But it's very important that patient's blood sugar is less than 70. You absolutely want to give them um, some glucose. Here goes the rule of 15, which I talked about already on my last video. I'm not going to go over it again. Well, I will just a little bit, but for details, watch my other video I made. Rule of 15 to treat hypoglycemia, blood glucose less than 70 is treated by ingesting 15 grams of juice or regular soft drink because it has glucose in it, right? Commercial products such as gels or tablets containing specific, specific amounts of glucose are convenient for carrying in a purse or pocket to be used in such situations. And you have to teach that patient, especially your type one diabetics, who are insulin dependent, they always need to have a form of glucose with them because they're going to be at higher risk for a hypoglycemic reaction, right? So you're going to teach them to carry it with them everywhere that they go. So anyway, you check their blood sugar, blood sugar is less than 70. You give them the 15 grams of glucose. You're going to recheck blood glucose in 15 minutes. That's why it's a rule of 15. Okay, so you give them the 15 grams, wait for it to kick in, recheck in 15 minutes. If the value is still, here we go. If the value is still less than 70, you're gonna give another 15 grams of more carbs and recheck the blood glucose in what? 15 minutes. The reason we're waiting 15 minutes, we have to give it time to take effect, okay? 
If no significant improvement occurs after two or three doses of giving that 15 grams of simple carb, you're going to call the healthcare provider. After an acute episode of hypoglycemia, have them ingest a complex carb, such as a ham sandwich or a cheese sandwich. And the reason for that, guys, is you give them a simple glucose. Yes, their blood sugar is going to go up, but then it might drop back down again. But if you give them a complex carb, it will keep that glucose higher for a longer amount of time. This is on NCLEX. You absolutely need to know this, okay? Avoid treatment with carbohydrates that contain fats, such as candy bars, cookies, whole milk, and ice cream. Why? Look at this, guys. The fat in those foods will slow the absorption of glucose and delay the response in treatment. Hello, guys. The whole point of us giving that patient that 15 gram of glucose, we need to bring up their blood sugar immediately. Remember, hypoglycemia will kill you much faster than hyperglycemia. So why would we give them something that has fat that will slow down the absorption of the glucose that we need them to absorb immediately? So this is what they need to stay away from. When you're giving them the glucose to get their blood sugar up, do not give them foods with fat, such as candy bars, cookies, whole milk and ice cream. And there's others on the list, but these happen to be the ones that you'll see the most often, but you need to know that. You wanna avoid over-treatment with large quantities of quick acting carbs so that rapid fluctuation to hyperglycemia doesn't occur. You don't wanna overcorrect the problem. If you give them too much glucose, now we have another problem. That patient went from a hypoglycemia to hyperglycemia. In acute care settings, such as a hospital, patients with hypo glycemia may be treated with 20 to 50 milliliters of 50% dextrose IV push. If they're not alert enough to swallow, because remember, we don't want them to aspirate. We don't want them ch choking. So if they're not alert enough to swallow and no IV access is available, another option is to give them one milligram of glucagon. And we're going to give that by um, subcutaneous route or IM. An IM injection in a site such as a deltoid muscle will response in the um, will result in a quicker response. So we would want to give it in a muscle such as a deltoid because we're trying to bring up that blood sugar ASAP. Nausea is a common reaction after glucagon injection. So if you are forced to give a patient a glucagon injection and the patient experiences nausea, right? That is an expected reaction. You're not going to call the doctor to tell them that that patient experienced nausea. We expect that to happen. Look at what it says. Therefore, to prevent aspiration if vomiting occurs, because we, we expect that they're going to have some nausea, you're going to turn the patient to the side, preferably their left side. You're going to turn them to the side until he or she becomes alert. Very important, guys. You need to know that. Um, one more thing I want to go over with you. Let's take a look at this table. Into professional care for hypoglycemia. And here I wrote no examples. Why? Because those examples are what you're going to see on your exams. Okay. So diagnostic testing, um, the history of that patient having hypoglycemia, knowing those signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. And obviously checking their blood glucose and that blood glucose being less than 70. Management, determine the cause of hypoglycemia so that we can correct the problem. If the patient's conscious, they have to be conscious. Look at this. You're going to have them eat or drink the 15 grams of quick acting carbohydrates, such as your four to six ounces of regular soda, five to eight lifesavers, one tablespoon of syrup or honey, four teaspoons of jelly, four to six ounces of orange juice, commercial dextrose, dextrose products per label instructions. If they're conscious, why would you put anything in an unconscious patient's mouth? You want them to aspirate? We, no, we don't. These examples that I just gave you, those are the examples that you're going to be seeing on your exam. Most likely select all that applies. HESI, ATI, NCLEX, you name it. So you gave them the 15 grams of carb. You're going to wait 15 minutes, then recheck their blood sugar. If blood glucose is still less than 70, after you've rechecked in that, after that 15 minutes, you're going to give them another 15 grams of carbs. Once the glucose level is stable and the next meal is more than an hour away, you're going to give them official, excuse me, additional food of carbs 
plus the protein or fat. Let me stop right here. Notice it said once the level's stable. So we're not still in the acute um, situation where we're trying to get it above 70, because remember, if it's lower than 70 and we're trying to bring up their blood glucose, are we going to give them any glucose that has fat in it? No, because the fat is going to slow down the absorption. That's why it says once the glucose level is stable, once that blood glucose level is stable and, you know, the next patient's meal is going to be about an hour away, then we can give them additional food that has protein or fat. Look at the examples. You need to know these examples. That's what you're going to see for testing. What are those examples? Crackers with peanut butter cheese. Okay. Give additional food if the patient's engaged in physical activity, regardless of the time of the next meal. Why? What does physical activity do? Lower the blood glucose. Worsening symptoms. Or if the patient's unconscious, what, what are you going to do? Give sub Q or IM injection of one milligram glucagon, IV administration of 20, 50 milliliters of 50% glucose. Again, um, if you're giving them that glucagon, whether it's sub Q or IM, make sure you place that patient on the side, preferably their left, but place them on the side because that glucagon can cause them to be nauseous. And if they vomit, we don't want them to aspirate. Guys, that's your hypoglycemia in a nutshell. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. Let me know what you'd like the next lesson to be on. Uh, don't forget on Sundays, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I uh, cover questions where I go over the questions, I teach you how to answer them. I go over the wrong answer choices and I teach you how they're wrong. So if there's something you'd like to see on those videos on Sundays, go ahead, let me know in the comments as well. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys will see me on my next video.